Hi, Melanie Dobosch here with Jennifer Robinson, a former Olympian in figure skating and current television host at Rogers TV. How are you today? I'm good, thank you. So when did you first start getting interested in figure skating? I only started first thinking about figure skating when I actually watched the 1988 Olympics on TV. I saw the ice capades um, maybe about a year or so earlier mm -hmm. and that's what really generated my interest. But um, I was more into soccer and gymnastics and baseball when I was a kid. So it was just those two events that really started uh, to, to develop my passion for skating. When did you first actually start figure skating? I started figure skating when I was eight. I started public skating, just playing around and watching the big kids kind of spin around the middle and do all those things when I was two, mm -hmm. but uh, I didn't start taking lessons until I was eight. I understand that many people thought that maybe you wouldn't be able to make it in the figure skating industry. Did this empower you to want to prove them wrong and encourage you to go further? Yeah, it's kind of something where someone tells you that you can't do it, you just, you know, you rebel. It's like when you're a teenager, your parents say you can't do it, so you want to do it that much more, and it was similar. Um, in vibe for my skating. Most of the time people said that I wasn't able to or I would never make it because I'm actually very tall for a figure skater, a singles figure skater. Mm -hmm. um, back in the day when I was still competing it was the Tara Lipinskis and um, they were about five foot two and really mm -hmm. tiny and petite and 16 and I was five foot six and you know 19 and 20 so I was a lot older than the other girls and definitely a lot taller but um, it, it ignited that fire of competitiveness within me and mm -hmm. that's what made me, I think, be so driven in the end. Who have been some of your greatest inspirations while you were figure skating? When I first started skating it was Elizabeth Manley because I watched her at the 88 Olympics and she had had to overcome so many obstacles while she competed and had a very up and down career and was able to lay it down in the moment while, you know, the 88 games she came out of not nowhere but she was not really intended to meddle. She was more of a dark horse contender and she put down the program of her life. So I would say that that is my greatest inspiration when I was figure skating. Where do you find that your biggest fan base comes from? Do you find that it comes more from adults or more from children? It's actually a blend of both. I think more adults know of me because now they have kids but they used to watch me when they were younger teenagers or young adults uh, while I was still competing and now that they have kids their kids know me because of their parents, yeah. but also I teach figure skating as well. I do choreography where I make up programs for kids and perform regularly with a, a touring ice show called Stars on Ice. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of the kids go to see that show, much like the ice capades back in the day when I went to go watch. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why the blend of you know people or fans are about 50-50 for adults and kids. How often when you were competing did you train? And in the off season, how often did you train? I don't compete anymore, but when I was competing, um, I would train about three hours on the ice and about an hour and a half to two hours off the ice. And then as I was veering towards the end of my career, I'd add an extra hour of therapy for <laughs> all the sore muscles and uh, you know ailments that come your way as you get a little bit older within a sport that's pretty physical. Um, as a professional show performer, uh, I only get about an hour of day because I teach figure skating and you have a job at Rogers TV and mm -hmm. it's tough to be able to, you can't train all the time because you just uh, can't pay your bills that way. <laughs> so um, it's, I only train about an hour a day on the ice and then I still, I work off ice a little bit more, about two hours and uh, this sort of supplements the missed training time on the ice that I lack right now. What is the most difficult part of like the performance part of the figure skating? Technically, it's a jump. Um, I would find that the most difficult jump for me was probably a triple flip, which is the second hardest triple in the repertoire for ladies. Now, you probably don't even know what that means, but uh, awesome. it was hard. <laughs> it was hard for me. Um, and I find just being able to overcome a lot of self-doubt and issues and put yourself out there by yourself, which is, you know, where you want to be as a, as a young kid, but then you're out there and you're like, holy, well, I totally wish for this, and what did I wish for? And sometimes putting it out there while a whole bunch of people were watching was also very difficult. Mm -hmm. um, but technically, that triple flip was a really difficult jump for me. But sometimes being out there by yourself is a little challenging too. As for your television career, when did you become interested in that? When did that start? I was always interested in doing television while I was going through amateur figure skating. So I'd kind of hang around the TV guys when they were at the arena and got to know them and um, that sort of, I've always had the interest but it really struck a chord into how much I was interested in it and I started working at Rogers TV 
for a show called First Local for uh, Jennifer Murphy, and she was one of the co-hosts of the news program, and she was on maternity leave, so I was just asked to fill in on an interim basis for about six months, and then my time was up, and she decided that she wanted to stay home, which was fantastic because I really wanted to stay. And basically that's how it all got kicked off. I did the first local program for about three years. And then my pro skating career picked up and I went on tour for about five months um, out of you know the year mm -hmm. solid. So they needed someone that was gonna be here a lot more often. Um, and then I just recently came back to the Rogers TV family this summer and did a show called Celebrate the County every Friday. And then there was a position open for daytime, which is a live one hour general news interest show. Um, and I got the job for that, so I'm still in it, which is great. Yeah. I understand that you would like to become a sports caster. Are there any specific sports like figure skating that you want to do, or is it just all around any kind of sport? I would like to do anything within any realm of television. I, I do really enjoy sports the most. Um, I'm going to be doing the 2010 Winter Olympic Games commentating for CTV for figure skating events coming up. So that's going to be very exciting. It's my very first time doing that mm -hmm. and been training and studying all the skating and even though you're in it, you're, you need to know a lot more than I ever thought you needed to know. <laughs> and hopefully that kind of tracks into something else. Um, I've always had a sports love, mm -hmm. um, but I also love entertainment and just, you know, talking. <laughs> so hopefully it works out. Where do you see the television industry in five years? I think the TV industry in five years is going to probably supplement the instant information that we have with the internet because it, everything is so now and current and as it happens. Um, you know, we're kind of reading the story right now about uh, the bubble boy, the, fa the boy that went up in the bubble and, you know, just reading about the opinions on, you know, everybody knew about that last Thursday because it was going on and everybody in the world knew that right now this is happening somewhere in the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, TV isn't always able to catch up quite as quickly as someone who's there shooting it right away. Um, so I think television with the internet and I'm sure with other technical technical advances that probably we don't even know about yet, mm -hmm. I think that will supplement nicely to sort of be able to reach a broader audience that the internet might not. You know, some older generation people don't have the computer savvy to be able to navigate mm -hmm. the, you know, using the computer. So hopefully TV will always be able to be a nice partner with what the internet is providing. Awesome. Well, thank you, Jennifer, for coming. No problem. And that's all the time we have. Fantastic. Cool.